I'm Jennifer Lee, Lead Admin of Andalus at Salesforce. On this episode of High Solved It, we're going to dive deep into a crucial topic that every admin faces daily, user management. It's not just a task, it's a core responsibility that ensures security and operational efficiency. And it's all about embracing the principle of least privilege access. Mike Reynolds is going to show you how to move from a profile-led security model to a persona-led security model. And added bonus, he's going to get your org agent force ready. So check this video out. Today, I'm joined by awesome admin Mike Reynolds. Mike's been in the Salesforce ecosystem for a bit, 10 years. And he is one of the Chicago Slack user group leaders and has 24 Salesforce certifications. Amazing. And I believe you also assisted in writing 12 of the certs, right? Something like that. Not yeah, to brag, right? Something like that. So it's great <laughs> yeah. to have you on How I Solved It, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So let's get to know you a bit better before we dive into your use case and solution. So again, you've been in the ecosystem for a minute. So what words of advice do you have for those you know, getting their toes wet in Salesforce, especially when we head into the AI era. Yeah, you know, the the best advice I could give anybody, I, uh, it's advice that I steal from Charlie Isaac. So thank you, Charlie. And it's uh, just go build it. You know, we, we have this amazing tool that really sets the Salesforce ecosystem apart from a lot of other tools, which is Trailhead. Mm -hmm. And you can go build an agent right now. You know, I mean, I think the badge takes that module's 30 minutes uh, and they they made that available at Dreamforce. And so it's a really great way to, you know, jump in there and actually see what it's like. You don't you don't have to just read articles or imagine you you have an org you can put your hands on. So just go build it. Right. Especially if your company doesn't have agent force and you can get, like you said, your hands on it, start playing around with it, make up use cases, right. you know, get your hands dirty. I like like pulling up my sleeves. Yeah. So user management is a really important core responsibility for admins, especially when it comes to adhering to the principle of least privileged access, which means granting your users the minimal amount of access to get their job done and nothing more. And I know that you've given several talks at the, in the community and Salesforce hosted events about moving away from a profile led security model to a persona led security model. So can you tell us why that's important moving to that model and why should admins really embrace it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great question. So uh, I think one of the easiest ways to explain this is to use an example from my own, uh, my own admin days. I had a, a small team, it was a big org, but a small team of just 11 folks. And across these 11 people, I had one person who raised their hand and said, hey, that person can do something and I can't. Uh -huh. Can you can you fix my access? And I went and I looked and across these 11 people, there were seven different configurations of permissions. And it's because when you get a big org, there's typically not a plan for how we're gonna manage a user's permissions. And so we end up getting lots of little permission sets that get uh -huh. created, lots of profiles, and they all get blended together in kind of interesting ways as people move within the company from job to job. And that really is kind of the, the crux of the user management problem that we have, right? We, we don't have a plan and we know we need to stop using the profile. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means we can build out a persona which is what a person does in Salesforce, not their job title. And then based on what they do, we can figure out how to give them that minimum level of access that lets them be successful. So in that regard, share with us the business challenge that you're trying to solve when it comes to user management. So it's three big things, right? The first one, we've just got to be accurate, right? Can't have a team of 11 people with seven different sets of access, mm -hmm. right? If they all do the same thing, we should have one set of access for them. So that's the first one. The second thing is we really need a naming convention and a plan, right? Uh, a good naming convention and a plan are gonna enable us to be successful and then give us the ability to actually understand what's happening without digging into deep into what that actual permission set or permission set group is trying to do. 
And then the last thing is that plan needs to make user management easy, right? Uh, we can't spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure out, well, why can't they do this? Or, or, you know, what's the scope of the problem I have? It needs to be simple. And so that's also a really important goal. All right. So now let's nerd out, Mike, show us how you built it. Yeah. So we really got to, we got to start with this idea of a persona, right? So I said a moment ago, a persona is what you do. It's not your job. It really helps to start with this visual. So this is from a presentation that we did at Dreamforce where we talked about a persona led model. And this just helps us visualize at a high level exactly what it is we're going to be doing in a moment in Salesforce. So each persona that we come up with that we realize we have, that persona is going to get its own permission set group. And we're going to name it after that, right? Remember that naming convention. Within that permission set group, we're going to see these same three building blocks consistently across the board. We're going to have a company base that's really wide, and I can reuse that permission set quite a bit. We're going to have read level permission sets, which they're really UI permission sets. They support navigation without error messages. And then you have this top level permission set, which does not get reused. And that's the persona permission set. That's where we can put everything that really that persona needs to be able to function that they didn't get from somewhere else. So let's jump into Salesforce and see how this actually works. Right away, I can see that if I don't have a naming convention, finding the permission set group that I'm looking for is going to be a bit of a challenge. But since I've created all of these with a name, I can create a list view that shows me just the persona permission set groups. So I'm already winning as an admin. So if I click into this permission set group, it's really easy to see the permissions that are contained within this permission set group. Right now, I've got those three building blocks that we talked about a little moment ago. You've got this company base, the read level, and then the persona. So let's kind of dig in and see what's in these. The first one is this company base. Now, the company base I intend to reuse. Right? So I want this to be able to be usable in all of my persona permission sets. And if you, if you ask yourself, well, what permissions can I give to everybody? It's not going to be anything up here in this apps section. We're going to have to scroll way past all of this and we're going to get to just system permissions and that's okay. That's what this permission set is really for. The base permission set is going to be taking care of things that I don't want to have to do over and over again, like, Hey, you can create and customize reports or you're a lightning experience user. And these are things that I don't need to, to add repeatedly. So I put them in the base and then I just reuse that base. And that becomes the foundation for all of my personas. The next one that we're going to look at is the read level. Now it's honestly easier if we go look at, uh, at this permission set in code builder, and this might be new for some people, but bear with me. I promise I'll make it worth it. So if I go into Code Builder, that's what you're seeing on the screen now. Code Builder is a way for me to actually visualize what's inside any particular part of Salesforce. Now, this isn't looking at my data, it's looking at the metadata. And in this case, it's looking at the permission set that, um, that we've set up for this, uh, this persona. So this read level permission set, well, what is it first off? The read level permission set should be everything that I need to navigate within an app and not hit an error message. So this is written in XML and XML is a, a tag based language. That means you're going to see uh, an opening tag and a closing tag, right? And usually we can just read what that tag is and kind of understand what it is. So this one is an application visibility. And that's the first thing I expect to see in a read level permission set, because again, it's UI. So this first thing is the standard lightning service console app, right? And I can see that it, the visible tag is set to true. So what this little block of code has done is it said, you get to use that app. Now there are some other things I would expect to see in here, tabs, objects, and fields, objects and fields at the read level only, right? right? When we're talking about a read permission set, it's just access to things. You can't do anything. You can see some things, can't do anything. So the other thing that I want to see in here 
is a custom permission. Now, if you've got developers that have built these really cool components, I want those developers to cook into that component the ability to see the component without an error message, but not do anything. That's really important. And this is an example of that. I've created a custom permission called read service LWCs. And that's going to let my users see these really cool Lightning Web components, but not interact with them, which is great. So I'm happy that that is here. I see the description of this permission set, which is good. And then I get into field permissions. This one happens to be on the account object, and it's the field account number. Now, I can see that readable is set to true and editable is set to false. Well, one thing that's a little difficult when you have really big permission sets, and this one is a big permission set, there's a lot contained within it, I want to make sure that there aren't any permissions in here where editable is set to true. And this is where Code Builder is going to really help me out. If I just highlight this line and then do Control F on my keyboard, it's going to search for what I have highlighted. And I can change the editable false to true and immediately see there's no results. So I know right now that there are no, there are no permissions inside this that give access to a field other than read, which is great because that means I just audited this entire file in about three seconds. Now I'm going to jump way down to the bottom of the file because I don't need to read all of these. I know all of them are just read level and I've actually got some object permissions. I'm going to highlight one here. Oh, I also have a license declared. Uh, fun fact about permission sets. If you don't declare a license, you can't add a tab, right? That's a, a little fun nuance for you. But here's an object permission. Within this, I can also see allow create is false, allow delete is false, allowing edit is false, allow read is true, which that's OK. Modify all is false. The object is the account. It's fine. And view all records is set to false. That's exactly how I would want this to be. And you can see these other two objects that are listed here also set up the same way. The last thing I said we would do is we would have tabs, right? Because again, Everything needed for the UI belongs in this permission set. And so here you can see a tab visibility, and it's set to visible, just visible. So they don't use true here. They just use visible. So that is everything that I would expect to see in a read permission set. And so what we just did is edit you know, over a 1,000 lines of code in, I don't know, what that take us? Three minutes, maybe? So really, really great tool for kind of reviewing what's inside big complex permission sets like this one that we've just described. So if I jump back to this permission set group for the persona for support agents, which we named persona support agents, I can see there's only one permission set left we haven't dug into, and that's this persona level permission set. Now, if we think about it, the company base gave us these fundamental things that everybody got, right? I'm a Lightning Experience user. I can use flows. I can see public list views. The next level up gave me the ability to use a big app, right? In this case, the uh, service console. The next level up is going to be the ability to edit things. If you can delete records, if you can create records, maybe you have access to different record types because you can create certain types of cases, but not all cases. All of that and any additional permissions that you need are going to reside in this persona for support agents. We don't really need to look at it. We just understand anything that I couldn't put in the other permission sets, that's where I add it. And once I have all of this together, I'm done, right? Now, for me, I actually have a really cool use case. I've got a customer that is actually about to set up their first agent in Agent Force. And the last thing that I need to do for them is make sure that all of their support agents can use my new um, agent that we're building with Agent Force. Well, the tricky bit about that is any type of managed package, oftentimes we get permission sets that come with those. When that happens, you really, really, really need a permission set group and you need personas. And the reason why is I don't actually want to rebuild all those permissions and move them into my model. I want to take that entire permission set that comes with the managed package and add it into my permission set group for my persona. And the reason for that is those managed packages, they can update those permission sets. And if I've rebuilt it on my own, maybe it's the same on day one. But if the out of the box one or the managed 
version gets updated, my version won't be. And so now I've got some debt to deal with. Now I could click add permission set, and then I could look through the 700 and something permission sets that I happen to have trying to find the one that I need. But Code Builder has another trick for me. Instead of looking through all of the permission sets that I have, because there are hundreds of them, I can go back to Code Builder and just type the name of the permission set I need, which I've done here. So this line of code just says that this permission set needs to be added to this permission set group. So I can take that, save it, and then I can go down here and choose this deploy this source to org. And it's going to go through, and instead of clicking for several pages trying to find the permission set that I need, it's just going to add that permission set. So when I come back to my org and I reload this page, my maintenance work has been done for me. So to recap, what we did is we were able to identify personas. Each persona, we created a persona permission set group, and then we added a company base, the read level permissions to give those app and navigation access to the UI, everything that that persona needs, and then a third permission set for the persona itself, which had all of the additional permissions that they needed. I take those three, put them together, put them in that persona permission set group, and everything is now easy to understand, easy to maintain, and follows a naming convention. And that's how I solved it. Thanks, Mike. That was a great demo. And this is such an important topic for admins because security is everything in your org and moving it to a persona led security model really sets user management up for success. And I love your use case for code builder to use it to review, make tweaks and push out changes to a permission set or permission set group. Um, you can also use it to clean up your profile for when you do do the migration, right? That's going to save a lot of clicks for sure. You absolutely can. In, in fact, one of the easiest things to do, if you're trying to figure out, well, what does my profile have that this persona needs, you can go and see a list of every single field and object that they have access to and copy and paste it. Right, right. Love that. And as we start moving to Agent Force, to your point, we need to start thinking about security and making it, you know, airtight for Agent Force. So thanks for helping us be Agent Force ready, Mike. And thanks for being a guest on How I Solved It. Yeah, thanks for having me. You just saw how Mike Reno simplified user management by shifting to a persona led approach. From creating base level access to refining persona permissions, Mike showed us how this model not only simplifies day-to-day -day management, but also enhances security and compliance. Huge thanks to Mike for sharing his expertise and actionable strategies. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and share. I'm Jennifer Lee, reminding you to continue to push those boundaries and build smarter. See you next time. Awesome.